Hi, and welcome to this session of Fortinet Live. It's RSA week, and I'm here. Uh, my name is Jonathan Nguyen. I'm a field CISO here at Fortinet. Today, I am joined by David Finger, who is in our product management team. And we're going to talk about the sheer level of complexity, the acceleration of the threat and operating environment, and all the things that are challenges to security operations teams across the industry. So, hey, David, it's good to see you again. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, and yep, you kind of hit on it. Life's uh, a little bit different and more challenging these days, but I'm, I'm doing well, and very good to see you. So if you can say you're doing well in the face of everything we're seeing, that's pretty awesome, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get going. Hey, this threat landscape, it's only continued to grow in terms of the sophistication of the threats and the challenges that people are facing today. You know, there are, there are a number of issues that security teams that are looking at the front line are facing, they're all being overwhelmed by the sheer volume of alerts, the complexity of the operating environment, and the speed at which things are happening. Those are just some of the things I'm hearing, but I wanna hear from you. What are you hearing uh, from, from your folks in the industry on the front lines today? Yep, so it's it's many of the same things, and it, you know, represented by exactly what we're doing here today, virtually, of course. You know, that is one of the biggest conversations that we do have as we engage with customers. And in fact, actually that level of engagement's gone up surprisingly, given this whole virtual, you know, meeting uh, uptick for sure. But it is exactly that there. They've got employees that they sent home rather abruptly in many cases and did a great job scrambling to, to make that happen. And they didn't realize how long that would be the state of things. And so from an endpoint perspective in particular, you know, they're out of sight but certainly not out of mind for a lot of these security teams, but trying to keep their hands around where they are, you know, what state they're still in, what has the end user done? Um, have they still maintained the security configuration and patch levels and all those things that are necessary to keep them safe from, you know, the constantly evolving threat landscape. So that is one of the biggest conversations uh, yeah. we have today is, is, you know, really remaining secure despite, um, this increasingly new, you know, what's looking yeah. to be a new work style. Yeah, you know, I think the, the, the ironic thing is that when we talk about endpoint protection, we're really talking about protecting the entire enterprise because the endpoint is, is really uh, one of the first areas that threat actors are going to target, right? Through email type threats leading to ransomware and all types of disruption. So I, I, I think that protecting the endpoint is really about protecting the entire enterprise. And, and that points to the level of complexity we see because you know, there are more endpoints than ever. Some are company provided, some are BYOD. And now we have entities and IoT and, and OT systems that are also interacting with the network and requesting network access. And so when, when you see these things, what are you hearing from organizations? That, what are their best practices as they go about addressing these types of challenges here? Yeah, so Certainly the end user awareness and training remains as high as it's ever been yeah. uh, without question. But I do find that one of the common pieces of advice that we continue to remind them and, and probably you do the same, Jonathan, is let's start with the basics, yeah. right? There's still foundational security practices that are more important than ever, maintaining patch levels, maintaining security configurations on these endpoints understanding we might need to grant more end user power, you know, given that they can't just walk down the corridor to the help desk, but at the same time, there are degrees of control that are that are very necessary. So really, you know, don't forget the basics, even yeah. as it is necessary maybe to do some upgrades and move into a more modern endpoint security posture. And it sounds pretty simple, right? All you've got to do is Piece of cake. implement those simple to intermediate controls across thousands of endpoints all working in millisecond SLAs. And, and so one, one of the things I often say is like, yeah, so it seems so intuitively simple, but to the operator, the SOC teams, you know, there's a significant challenge because you can't really secure or protect what you can't see. And, and I think with this proliferation of devices working from not only the home environment, but hotels, on net, off net, uh, how do you ensure that you've got visibility across? I think that's where the, this notion of having a security fabric really becomes uh, in, into play. It's the ability to understand a very broad operating environment in an integrated way um, so that you can address those those simple things as it were. And, and I think that's the heart of it, right? So you look at, at, at our FortiGuard research and any reputable body in the industry, it still points that we're failing on, on security hygiene, simple intermediate controls. And I think it goes to the fact that the issue is pretty complex and it's very distributed and it's getting more complex and it's accelerated 
And I think security teams are having a really hard time uh, to protecting such a broad environment if they really don't have visibility end to end or edge to edge across that that land, that WAN, that data center, that cloud edge, right? So, you know, from that perspective, I, I think I'd like to get your thoughts about you know Fortinet's view on, on endpoint solutions and and how we go about addressing those types of challenges. Yep. And without question, as I do talk to you know our customers and their security teams, it's it really is that lack of visibility and the things that they can't see yeah. are the things that they worry about most. The things they can see, right? They can in, you know introduce degrees of control around, and so you know that's really where it starts is making sure that yeah. right we really can understand what is the state of the device before we rush to some of the more advanced capabilities of. Yeah. How is it operating? What are the anomalies? What are the incidents yeah. of the investigation? All that. Yeah, you know what? I, I got asked a question earlier today about what keeps me up at night, right? And and I said, well, it's really about the the known unknowns. What I do know is that my environment is constantly expanding, my, my digital exposure, my attack surface, if you will. There are more network edges appearing on a constant basis because the enterprise is, is expanding, because we're moving towards more contactless commerce, more digital transformation initiatives. And my big worry would be, do I really understand where all of my network edges are? What What is in my network, which is actually in my network, what the state of those devices, applications, users, et cetera, because it's where these edges come together, these network edges, the gaps in visibility appear. And in those gaps are where I see device devices go uh, not properly configured, for instance, right? I, I see vulnerabilities that don't get detected, let alone get mitigated. And then I see, um, you know, um, anomalous behavior that goes uninvestigated. So that, that's exactly it, I think, is that more endpoints, more edges, more complexity, and in many cases, not enough or, or less visibility. And that, I think, is a huge stress on security teams is that they're trying to get their arms around a very broad, distributed operating environment, and they're not having success with those traditional approaches, right? And so with that in mind, why don't you tell us about how how we utilize this Fortinet security fabric for endpoint security and, and how we're using that to, to help those customers out. Yep, and you did bring up a very important point when you'd mentioned the stress that you know this dynamic environment's placed on them. Again, bear in mind, and we all understand it because we're living it, there are additional stresses that are in everybody's life, including our security operators. Yeah. So just as they're being stressed for sure by you know, their professional right responsibility, they also do have personal responsibilities and it is a challenging time for everyone. So the more that we can help reduce the stress levels, you know, for them in the workplace, right, that's going to benefit them just overall. And, and that is one of the big challenges. You've got security teams that are already, you know, running hard to keep pace with the yeah. cyber threat landscape, all the alerts, things like that. Add in the current, you know, outside of the office stresses, right? And, yeah. and then throw on top of it, you know, how do we actually improve the security posture? And so, yep, to your question, and I, I promise, you know, to actually get there, really, you know, we do see that the more we can give back visibility to those teams, yeah. the more that we can actually automate, right? A yeah. lot of those functions yeah. is just going to help them out immensely beyond yeah. just an individual product or technology. Yeah, and I, I think the holistic approach is right because what they're also telling me is that in addition to those security metrics that they're responsible for, now they're responsible for those business outcomes and that digital end user experience. And this continuing expectation from users for better experiences, better and faster responses. And then from the business side, faster data collection, curation, and the ability to leverage data for better outcomes, right? So there's this continuous drive and pressure for better experiences and better business outcomes, all the while securing the higher orders of effectiveness. So I think there's a, there's a lot of pressures on security teams today. And I, I think that when we provide them with the ability to see edge to edge across the networking environment, the security environment, and indeed the computing environment as well, it gives them better ability to, to understand how changes in network performance, changes in security, and changes in application performance begin to affect the overall experience and those business outcomes. And I think if we do that through the fabric, we go a long way towards addressing the types of stresses and the efficiencies and the productivity that SOC teams can see. So, um, and I think that's what we're seeing in the fabric today, right? So we've got these elements where we've got very mature prevention, detection, and response technologies 
you know, now being augmented by our, our AI capabilities, that artificial neural network, 12,000, 12, 12 and a half billion nodes, right? Through which we begin to accelerate that collection curation of information. And in that way, we take predictive and proactive steps. I think that's the key whereby we begin to anticipate and better respond. And I think that when we do that, we get to that promise of what we used to call, back in the old days, we called it a self-defending network, if you remember that, right? But I think now, because of that automated capability, we're getting there. And that's, that's becoming more of a reality today than ever because it leverages the same concepts as IoT, the ability of, of integrated technologies to collect and share information to make semi and fully autonomous decisions. So I think that's the good news, is that I think we're on the cusp of of some pretty dramatic changes in the way we approach security operations. So last question for you. Um, well, and I yeah. just jump on the autonomous yeah. bit because I think that's very relevant, you know, both in the security ops center and as well as out on the endpoint, right? That, yeah. that device really does need to be able to, you know, understand the behaviors and the activities that it's seeing on the device that it's protecting rather than just waiting for a traditional right. update of threat intelligence, right? To become yeah. much more durable in terms of the protection. Yeah. In fact, um, you know, it was not that long ago, right? That MITRE released the attack evaluation results, which, right. you know, was a, a great, you know, insight into not only the, you know, tactics and techniques of the adversaries they were emulating, but also the endpoint security products that were being th put through their paces to understand how much, how many of these tactics and techniques can they not only detect, yeah. but with the introduction of the new protection, you know, evaluation category, yeah. how can they actually translate that actionably into protection without going through that traditional response process? So super yeah. powerful, super important. It, it is huge. You know, I was I was talking to Narav Shah about, about Secure SD WAN and that ability to understand how network performance needs to shift to, you can reconnect connections, create new connections, shift to an alternate WAN access methodology, right? To understand the criticality of that application, to ensure you have that optimized uh, network performance. And at the same time, understand how network performance changes require changes and adjustments on the security front, and likewise on the compute, all of which needs to happen seamlessly in the background, right? In sub millisecond SLAs, really tight tolerances, so that it's seamless to that user that's continually expecting better results and better response time. So yeah, I, I'm actually pretty pretty jazzed about what we're about to uh, to see in our industry. Sure. Um, yeah, so cool. Um, last question, going into what we're seeing today, what's in the news. Critical national infrastructures are have always been a major target for, for threat actors, right? And I, and I see that now, I see the cascading effects because we're a much more interconnected uh, society and, and business environment, more so than ever. We're, just about every business is really a, an IP-enabled IT shop. You know, we, those are dependencies now. Uh, I don't think we should talk about brick and mortars because even brick and mortar shops are really digital businesses now, right? Um, yeah, so, so what are your thoughts about how we leverage the fabric and endpoint protection to uh, help better secure the critical national infrastructure? Yeah, well, you know, that is a, a different infrastructure, even though, as you'd mentioned, it's becoming increasingly connected, just like the IT side of the house. But, you know, there are very important differences from the age of those systems, right? We know a lot of that infrastructure by design yeah. is supposed to live 20 and 30 years and run older versions of operating systems that IT, you know, moved on from a while ago. So how do you secure that? You're going to need modern endpoint capability yeah. that can deploy on legacy systems, for example. So yeah. it's a very different but critically important world. Yeah, I, I think the major issue uh, here, as you point out, is that overlap between IT and OT systems. And what it really points to me is visibility. You really need to understand what's actually operating in your network in order to make decisions. I think that's where the perspective changes. You know, the, the attacker works from the perspective of that after establishing reconnaissance and persistence and, and, and working around and rooting around a target's environment, they understand what's actually there, its actual configuration, its current state, whereas the operator in many ways, because of a lack of visibility, you know, works from the idea of the presumption of what should be there. And I think a lot of stress, and we all know this as, as operators, is that the difference between what is actually there and what we believe to be there is often where things go wrong. It's where things are, are, are exploited and leveraged for, for bad, bad results. So I think moving forward, the ability to truly have 
edge to edge uh, visibility and control that cross platform, the cross domain visibility is going to be key. And I think that's one reason why the fabric is so, so unique. So, uh, hey, I know time is short. It, it's already late in the day. Uh, and hey, let me give you a closing thought or two and then yeah. kind of get your take on it, if you don't mind. Um, no. You know, I, I, I think back to my family and I always like to kind of, you know, bring things into a personal context just to make it a little more interesting, right? For my older son, right, this is a guy whose eyes are much bigger than his stomach. So there's constantly <laughs> a discussion of only take what you can eat, right? And I think the same is true for security, right? You definitely need more and more security technology, but hey, just make sure you can right? Eat what you take, or you can yeah. actually implement and maintain what you deploy, for example. And yeah. I'll get your thought on that and then give you a second one. Yeah, I, absolutely true. I, I think right now the research suggests that the average uh, U.S. enterprise business has some 65 to 68 different security products in their environment with, uh, with upwards to 50 different management consoles. And so I will, I will bet my, uh, my shirt right now that probably 40 to 50% of those devices are misconfigured, that the rules within those devices are probably haven't been updated for some time, uh, and that there is a tremendous amount of devices that are still operating live and no one realizes is still there. So, so absolutely, um, having a lot of device sprawl generating massive volumes of alerts really don't give you visibility. Uh, they give you more, uh, well, the military term would be chaff, right? It, it's more things that obstruct uh, the radar's ability to discern what, what is happening in the environment. So, yeah, sometimes more is less. Yep. And then here's my second one, because I've also got a younger one who wants to do everything that his older brother is doing, right, yeah. uh, on his own. But I always have to encourage him, right, don't be afraid to ask for help. I mean, I admire that, you know, you're trying to do that and you want to be as independent as possible. But... Look, there are people that have been there, done that, and they're available to assist. So, yeah. you know, the fact that there's managed detection response service that backs, you yeah. know, these powerful endpoint security tools, for example, yeah. don't there's nothing wrong with asking for help yeah. where you need it. Yeah, you know, Admiral Rogers, when he was still the head of Cyber Command, I had the, the, the honor of having lunch with him one time, and he said to me, Jonathan, Security is not a DIY exercise. It's a team sport. So make sure you find the right teammates and make sure you find the right partners, vendors, and service providers and put together an effective team that meets your needs. Because I guarantee you the adversary works as a team, either formally or informally, but they're there. And so you should never go into the forest hunting bears by yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like that one too. Yeah. Case in point. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're at the cusp of a new week. Uh, it's another RSA event. Um, many ways, a lot of new things, but in many ways, we're still talking about things you and I have been talking about for, I don't know, at least a decade now, right? Simple intermediate controls, multi-factor authentication, a rigorous approach around vulnerability management, right? Application uh, uh, vulnerability management, security awareness training. <laughs> those, those are the types of things, and I, I think ultimately the, the marketplace is beginning to learn that a, a true fabric-based approach that manages complexity uh, is, is the best way to go uh, to address these. Hopefully next year we'll have better news, right? Yeah. <laughs> May it be so, Jonathan. May yeah. it be so. Have a great week, my friend. I'll see you soon, okay? Hope so. Take care. <laughs> right. See ya.